Wow. Yeah. I mean, this is. I, I'm not used to having the mic, but this will be fun. Okay, let's. So this is this is. Um, first of all, I need I need somebody who's going to volunteer to be my timer today to help guide me. Do you have a phone that you can I keep? Ten? Okay, so let. Okay, mom, you're going to be busy with. So what I need to do is set it for ten minutes, and then when that's up, we'll do another ten minutes. Who ordered the Bloody Mary? Bloody Mary. There we go. Um, okay, are we having fun so far? This is amazing. I thought this is going to be so fun. What I did is um, invited some amazing people that are happen to be our friends too. That I want you guys to get to know. Then you can go see them perform because they're amazing. And unless you've already seen them, so. But to start the day, I figured, you know what? Let's do ten minutes since um, my amazing wife is sleeping. <laughs> and if there's any questions you have that you might not ask in front of her. And maybe I'll answer them. Maybe. Maybe not. So let's go, let come on. How often do we have this chance to do this? So um, who who's got a question? About Melissa Etheridge. Or anything. It does yes, love. Um, I had seen her in American uh, American Idiot. Um, and I wanted to know, it was great, and that's the only reason we had gone. But I wanted to know, like, how did she, like, had she ever had an acting experience prior to that? Um, and how did she how did that get happen? the part? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so does anyone know what American Idiot was? Yeah. Yeah, so it was, yeah wasn't that awesome? It was a musical <laughs> Melissa did on Broadway, and it was based on the... Um, Green Day, hello. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens when you get older. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, and it was a musical on Broadway, and at the time I was doing my show, uh, Nurse Jackie. <laughs> and uh, the, one of my producers on the show, uh, Richie Jackson, his partner, his husband, was the producer of American Idiot. And we had all gone to see it, and Richie one night went, oh, Melissa would be great at this. And I said, you're so smart. So, um, and Melissa's a theater geek, you know? She, if in another life, I think she would have been doing summer stock with me somewhere right in the late 70s. So she's, um, she always loved theater, you know? And always, um, I think what's amazing about when she, some of her performance, her songs, they're so theatrical, you know? And, and uh, we both love, our love of musical theater, you know? Um, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, Godspell, all of those, you know, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, she was, well, <laughs> she, I to set that and start it now, I'm sorry, I don't mean Do you anything. like doing musical theater? No, but do you want me to set the time? Oh, yeah, I thought you had to get her going in theater. That's like, sure, go for it. Oh, yeah. Yes, let me know when I'm at 10. Okay, yeah, I'm so good. Sorry. <laughs> um, Oh my god, how's it going so far? This is, again, did I mention it's my first time doing this? Okay. okay, yes. Yes. Oh, Why, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, who's got another question? What's it like being... Good morning, buddy. Good morning. Uh, what's it like being around Melissa where she might just start singing a song or a jingle or, you know... You know what? It's crazy because... Uh, Sometimes I have to pinch myself because it'll be just normal. We'll be like doing dishes. I'll, I'm doing dishes, <laughs> <laughs> and and she'll just kind of break into song, and it's it, it's kind of mind blowing. It's um, I do make her every time she asks for water, which is about six times a day. I make I make her sing it to me. <laughs> well, why have that perk, right? <laughs> Bloody Marys, Bloody Marys. <laughs> okay, who's come on? Let's we can go deeper, whatever you you know, or not. We'll see. I actually want to know more about you. So, you know, when, when are you doing more film work or, or like some acting, you know, Hollywood, you know, stuff? Okay. Well, um, after Nurse Jackie, which was um, that was that was just an amazing experience for me. It was, I I got to after. Th Almost 30 years of just working nonstop, I took a, a nice little break to just be a mom, which was kind of the best thing that could happen to me. So I took that break because honestly, I, um, 
when you run a show, when you create a show, you give up your life to it for at least, you, you're in like, you're in pre-production for months. And then you do post-production, so it ends up being about nine months of your life. And Nurse Jackie was in New York. So I had to do everything there, and so that kept me away from California. So after four years, you know, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm ready. And so since then, um, during all that time, I've been, you know, I, I do, I get calls, I get meetings, and I think, nothing's more interesting than my own life right now, because what my wife is doing is, is pretty remarkable, I think, during such crazy time days. She's asleep right now. She doesn't know why she feels so good and warm inside. I really do um, So a couple years ago, I decided, you know what, what we're doing and what she's doing in such a, a funny, cynical world right now, and we're in such a time of imbalance that I... And, and we're starting a company of medicinal cannabis. To help. Woo! Yeah. Oh, we're going to have talks about that, about CBD and everything. Good. That um, I decided, you know what, this is what I want to do a show about. So we're doing a docu-series about what we're doing with, with, with um, the world and with the, the cannabis and Melissa's advocacy. And um, I don't know if you heard, but there was an arrest in North Dakota. <laughs> What you don't know is I got arrested too. <laughs> yeah, but the charges were dropped. Um, I was gonna tell you a quick story about that day. How are we doing on time, by the way? I don't want to talk too much. Uh oh, wait, what's it say? Here we go, we're good. See, this is the life of a television producer too, I know, at the moment. 7 a.m., I've got union, let's go, let's go. We got eight hours. Okay, well, oh yeah, okay, so, this, so we're in North Dakota, coming back from, I got six minutes, from, um, Canada, and we're all in our, <laughs> some of the crew knows this story, we were all in our pajamas, and um, somebody had just been elected, hmm. so we're sending love, and uh, the, the border people were a little loaded for bear, and so um, we were all in our pajamas, and um, we got arrested, but I got very indignant with the very young guys who uh, were playing good cop, bad cop, but I'm a mom and they're both 20, 30, nothing. And the one guy said, have you smoked cannabis in the last 24 hours? Hmm? And I went, yeah, for my menopause. Do you have a mother? <laughs> he backed off real quick. So anyway, but a lot of good came from it. Again, my amazing wife is, is, is making lemonade because now, because the sweet sheriff who's brought in is like, we're medicinal now, but we don't know what we're doing. We're so sorry. And Melissa said, and it's a true story, you know, North Dakota was the last state I had never been to. This is my first time in North Dakota. So, you guys feel the boat? Yeah. 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 Um, yes, you got another. Who's got another question? Oh, come on, you guys. This is juicy stuff. Oh, look at you. I just wonder what your favorite thing to do with Melissa is. She loves to do puzzles. <laughs> we love to take hikes. <laughs> Be as specific as you'd like. <laughs> Um, we love to binge watch Netflix. Um, we, oh gosh, we, we, we do enjoy an herbal, um, which my hope for you in your future, your, your generation is going to be smart because you're not going to do all these pharmaceuticals. You're going to do plant, plant based medicine. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, what else? <laughs> um, we love to travel. We love when she has a day off and she's on tour. Um, my favorite thing, and you're going to actually meet one of our friends today. What what we do is is um, you're going to meet our friend Kathy, who we met Kathy and Jerome uh, when we were in Ferguson. Um, we were in St. Louis. Do you remember when Melissa did? Um, uh, you know, uh, wait, it's the show about your family tree. Did you guys see that? Yeah. 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 What's or you Who do you think you are? Thank you, Paul. And we were in, so we were based in St. Louis for like a week. And what I like to do is I'll get online and I'll see certain areas and I'll because we love food. Food, we love good food. And 
And so every time we have a day off, I will do some research and I try to find, you know, an unheralded female chef wherever we are because God bless the men, they get all the attention. So we have made some really dear friends and you're going to meet one today and it's Chef Kathy and so, and Kathy's Kitchen in Ferguson. So uh, that's what we like to do and you're going to actually find out what that was like for us today. So that's one of our other favorite things. Linda, Linda, I want, I want to give you some Darling, watch your knees. We had these, these made for the cruise. Oh, yeah. Everybody got the pink ones? Yeah. Come on. yeah. Oh, you guys. Go. We had a maid come see us. We're up, up there, Terry and I. We got them to give out. I had 1,200 of them made. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a question back in the back? Hi, can you tell us something that Melissa does that drives you crazy? <laughs> Can, can you tell us something that Melissa does that drives you crazy? There, there really isn't much. That, that, no, I mean, it's cute stuff. Like, I joke that my wife can look over a dead body and not see it. She's, um, and I see everything. I see everything. So she might... I'm amazed sometimes, like, wow, wow, there's, there's her slippers and there's her sweatpants and there's her... Oh, I know where she is. She's in that room. But it, it doesn't drive me nuts. I think it's kind of sweet. Yeah. Um, how are we doing on time? One minute. Oh, we have one minute. Forty-eight seconds. One minute, forty-eight seconds. Yes, love. Um, how is the cannabis? Mm -hmm. And what stock would you invest in? Our stock. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not public, but but it, you know what? It's 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 going great. It's it's a it, it's a long journey because honestly. Uh, uh, big pharmaceutical does not like this 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 product, and but it's it's and it's a female plant. I don't know if you know that. Um, and um, yeah, and so we we and with Melissa have she's been speaking out about this for years, and so it's all coming together. You're going to meet Josie and Cricket. I don't know if you've seen our amazing partners. They're husband and wife. They have long dreads and beautiful tattoos and. They have seven children and two grandkids, wow. okay? And they've been fighting this fight up in Northern California for a long time, so. Yeah, it's going great, thank you. And it's, uh, you'll really see things start to explode this year, so. Uh, One more? Yeah. Yes, uh, well this is gonna perform in New York City for Gay Pride. Yes. And Stonewall and all that. Would you guys be interested in riding on the back of our Harleys when we lead off the parade? <laughs> oh, wow! Awesome. Wow! I, the, I will find out. Wow. I, I, don't, I don't know if she's opening it or ending, ending the, the it. pro. The, ending it. She's ending it. So I don't know if we're going to be the right that day. Well, but we're, we'll, we're at the beginning of the parade and we ride. And I want to ride on a Harley. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. Oh, we look badass. That's an awesome sight. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. We'll do this every day, more Q&A, okay? But, um... Time's up. Time's up. Thank you. Yes. My wife and I made this for you. Oh, oh my God, that's wow. beautiful. It's pink because, uh, because of the survivorship. Yes, thank you. Oh, beautiful. That's awesome. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, I only... God, I love lesbians. <laughs> and here's the book. old joke, you know, um, how many lesbians does it take to screw in a light bulb? One, and it's not funny. <laughs> hey, Paul. Thanks. Hey, Paul. All right, Wendy, what do you think? Are we getting close? All right, I'm so excited you guys are going to meet Wendy. I don't know, did anyone see Wendy Moton last night? Yes. All right. She is, is she is amazing. I'm telling you all right now, I'm not sure. She'll tell us when she's coming up. We're going to talk to her. Ladies and gentlemen, a big warm welcome for my friend Wendy. Look, you got a microphone. Yeah. 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 I'm Melissa Edwards. Uh, I know we oh. Look, I let you borrow the car. She let me borrow this this morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Hey, how you doing? Wendy, Mr. She Wendy's my first guest. This is so amazing. How are you feeling? I'm feeling amazing. Thank you for getting up so early. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I'm. Now you had some fans here last night. Woo! Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And here's what's great is I want you guys to get to know these amazing women. So, um, Wendy, how long have we known each other now? 
Three years. Three years. Yes. And what's great is, see, Wendy happens to be with David Santos, who is, um, you know, Melissa's bass player. And here's a little bit, you guys don't know this. We're going to talk about, well, first tell your story, then we're going to tell the story of how much they had to do with Melissa's last album, The Medicine Show, okay? Because it all started in their basement studio in Nashville, Tennessee. God, over a year ago. Yeah. But before we get to that part, I just want you to, t to fill in our friends. If you had to tell everybody, you, you, your, tell, tell us your story in your words, and I'll jump in and say funny, really great things. Go. Go. Well, I'm a singer. I used to have records out in the, in the 90s that started everything, a song called Coming Out of the Rain. And I toured a lot. I've had amazing mentors like Julio Iglesias, who's always duet partner, Julio Iglesias duet partner for 15 years. We've heard of him. <laughs> Julio Iglesias. I toured with Tim McGraw and Faith Hill, so I do their big tours. Have you ever seen them? Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, we've heard of them. Okay, Martina McBride, Vince Gill, and on and on and on. So this is a great, uh, uh, amazing opportunity. Uh, Melissa Etheridge was like, hey, you want to come and you know, be one of my artists? And I'm thinking, Yes, we've been trying to get Wendy on this for this is so exciting that you you actually you, and you and David have never been on a cruise together. No, we don't typically cruise together or work together. That we've been together 25 years. Woo! I know, right? It's because we work separately. <laughs> Like two ships in the night, it's like, hey, you okay? Thank God for FaceTime because now we get to look at each other. But this is where I get to see Wendy every day when we're um we're in the bus, right? And David's in his bunk, and I always walk by and I see the light of his phone on his face. I go, hi, Wendy. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. exactly. Yes, that's how I, I feel like you're always with us. Yes. Where is David? I saw him hurt. He's around here somewhere. David, are you, where are you? Oh, you're hiding all the way back there. There he is. Hi, honey. Amazing <laughs> show last night, by the way. Amazing oh. show. Yeah. 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 It was stunning. Now, part of what I love about Wendy, I want you to tell them wh where you're from okay. and tell, tell, let's go back there. Let's hear, I want I'm to I'm from little. Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, and I, you know, I'm 54 years old. I like to tell my age now because I'm happy to make it. That's right. <laughs> I had another birthday. So I'm gonna be 55 this year. So I've been doing this 30 years and I'm blessed to do it. And, but yeah, I came from Memphis. I now live in Nashville, Tennessee. Did you always love music? You know, I didn't know it till I came maybe in my 30s. All I know is as a kid, I just kept, I was always going to rehearsals for things. And I don't know, I just, I was just been working the whole time and... Well, what was the first time music really, you know, oh, well, wait, I love music. I want to say, like, was there, was it radio? Was it something that... Well, TV, because you know, in my 50s, TV was everything, so... All of my ear training and my love for music came from television shows. Like we so, like all I learned all the themes, you know, Perry Mason, Manix, <laughs> Cannon. Wait, you know, all wait, that. Wait, give me the give me one of those things. Like what yeah. like Perry Mason. Uh shoot, of course she's gonna ask me. Honey, give me a key or something. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Um, again, my love of TV too. You could have, you'd have a whole 60 seconds to not just give a theme song, but explain the whole plot of the show, right? So sit right back in your hear it. Too. You just like it's so easy. Like here's the premise. <laughs> but some of those old songs, the, pre the the full orchestrations, they were beautiful. So amazing. I mean, they had the, the most amazing arrangements, and they were doing it every day. As you know, it's like they were coming up with these great songs and themes. And then I fell in love with like the variety shows, like Carol Burnett. So oh, I went from like yeah. Carol Burnett to uh, Flip Wilson, oh, and yeah. from Lawrence Welk uh. to Soul Train, yeah, Midnight Special. <laughs> I mean, we got everything during those times. Now I don't know if you know, this, my very first oh, Hollywood job was with Carol Burnett. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. She was my hero. Wow. I mean, come on, right? Yeah. And then I moved to New York, or New York, from New York to LA in 92, 92 and it was Carol's uh, return to variety. And it wasn't Tim Conway, and no, all this was years later. And it, we only did six episodes. It was a thrill of my life to work, work with her. It was just really, 
it was great, and I was a writer on the show, but I also was still acting, and I got offered, I'm gonna make it about me right no, now. No, no, I got, I wanna know the story. I got offered a job in Tim Burton's Batman. Do you remember that movie? Yeah. And they said, well, you gotta choose between writing on the show or doing Batman, and if you do the show, we'll let you do two sketches with Carol. And I went, I'm in. So oh, wow. you can Google two sketches. It's Carol Burnett's Star Trek, yeah. and I played Bones. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor. <laughs> And Andrea Martin plays Spock, it's pretty funny. And then um, then I got to do a, a song sketch with Carol and Andrea, and we got to take off on the Del Rubio triplets. Do you remember them? The old, oh anyway. So I love Carol. Okay. I'm gonna look up those two episodes. Yeah. I, Cause I wanna see your face. It's, oh, it's pretty fancy. You probably look the same. No, I have a really bad wig on. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Nobody looks good in Star Trek stuff. No. Um, Okay, so last night was your first yeah. time. It was my first time here with the Etheridge Nation. What do yes. you think? Amazing. It was so supportive. They stayed. They listened. They, you know, contributed to the thing. Everything. You know, I had my uh, compliment. Uh, compliment. I can't even think of the word, but I can't, I can't believe like, I wrote this. Really I know that's you. what I'm saying. I'm a musician of vampires. I'm just going to bed. <laughs> but um, it, I, I was right in this room last night. Oh. So I got like two more shows to do. And, and by the way, if you happen to be in Nashville, April 20th, yes. I'm making my uh, Opry <gasps> debut. Oh, come on. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Vince Neal was going to introduce me. And he, he just produced an Americana country record on me. No, okay. I'm going to get April 20th. And I'm so excited. I cried like a baby for like 48 hours. <laughs> I did. Congratulations. Thank That's you. That's wonderful. So this, News you just hear it for the first time. That's first time news. Yes. David, aren't you proud? <laughs> it's so weird to have you off stage and have her right here. I love it. I love it. Um, does anyone have any questions for Wendy? That's my last name. Wendy Moulton. M O T E N. And when's your next show? Is that tomorrow? Tomo no, my next show is tomorrow, 8 15 p.m. I think in a room called Maxim. Maxim. No, okay. Maxim. Magnum. Magnum. Thank you. I don't know where it is. I got to the first room, which was this beautiful space. I've only been here and the the goat path to our room, so I don't know if there's a rest of the boat. With that. We got to see the rest of the boat, but I got a show tomorrow, 8:15 p.m. 8:15. Okay. And the Maxim. Magnum. 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 Pi. Thank you. That's the only way you know TV. I got it right now. And then on the fourth, I'm going to do Magnum, PR's room, 12, 15 in the afternoon for the people who are just going to be getting up at 11 like me. Hey, now I have a question because this is, that's okay, that just fell out yeah. of my ass. It's okay. Um, let's watch our language. Okay. Um, how am I on time, by the way? Where are we at? That's right. Okay, let's keep doing 10 minutes. Uh, so, yeah, are we at 10? Let me know when it's... Uh, oh, you're fired. Six. We got all the time. She didn't start All right, good. What's the yeah. different... Thank you, Paul. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing oh, Paul Castro. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Now, doing your own show, um, do you find yourself, w when you're backing somebody up, what's the, diff what's the different art form between backing somebody up and then doing your own? It must be a different mind shift for you. It's totally a mind shift because yeah. you have to decide internally that you're going to be a part of their vision. So you have to make that decision or you can't do that job. Mm -hmm. So I started off as a recording artist first. During the 90s, I was doing that Whitney Houston era. Mm -hmm. So with Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, mm -hmm. Celine Dion. It was me. Fourth place, you get nothing. Just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> you get nothing. So, But it was a great run. I, I opened up for Michael uh, Bolton when he was playing stadiums. And I was supposed to be the next Whitney Houston. And it was a great ride. And then, yeah. you know, but um, so the mentality is I'm the best person to, in my mind, to sing with these artists because I get what they're trying to do, I understand, and I'm there for their vision, and they know it. Don't you, maybe it's because, uh, well, listen, I talk about this a lot, being ladies in our late 50s. Mm. <laughs> it's, it almost means more, like, to say, oh, you're the next Whitney Houston, that we're so young back then, right? Yeah, yeah. And now, even, I see it with Melissa, that, that I, I think the greatest American guitar player right now is a middle-aged woman. That's I mean, right. I think she's badass, yes. and so, it, and it means, 
and it even means more later. So now, what's happening now with everything that's going on with you, it almost means more now that we're living It totally means more now. The fact that a Vince Gill would find me, number one, because we're not in the same circles. The fact that he would find me when we tour together and then he, you know, appreciates my musicianship or my work ethic or whatever, and to the point where he's like, you need to be heard and I want to produce you. Oh, come in my on. 50s, come on, yeah, it's a miracle, and then it just keeps coming, you know, like, Melissa inviting me to this amazing opportunity, she don't have to, she, she, she you know, she likes me, but it don't mean like, hey, come join my team, you happen to be amazingly talented, too, so we're very lucky to have you, really lucky to have you, so make sure you see Wendy, okay, and she's gonna hang with me, here, we're gonna just, I just want this to be an amazing, badass panel of strong women, right? So we're gonna keep adding on. So um, I, I hope they're ready backstage, but I'm gonna bring out two amazing women, okay? Uh, we have, I think you know one, Sonia Lee. Woo! Sonia, come on out, and an amazing Daphne Rollins. Come on out. Okay. You guys are, oh, I didn't get, okay, we're gonna keep filling as they're walking. Yeah. Do you guys know, have you, this this just uh, Sonia just introduced us to Daphne, and I don't know if we're going to tell that story, but ladies and gentlemen, look here she is, Sonia. Yeah. 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 Here you guys, here, right here. But oh, do you want to play? Oh, look, you got a nice. Oh, what do we need for? Do you want me to hold your coffee? No, no, we're good. I'm well. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Good morning. And when Good morning. You, did you, you guys had just met this we morning? We just met yesterday. Okay. Uh, Nashville, Nashville is small. You know, we know a lot of the same people. We got a mutual friend, Shelly Fairchild, yeah. who is like one of my closest friends. She's a singer. She did this last year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, Shelly. She's a good, great friend. These she did my cornrows. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> because I don't know how. Oh, my God. Oh my God, this is so fun. Oh, See, darling, someday you're going to have powerful, amazing friends you're going to do a talk show with. And you're just going to sit there and go, wow. Okay, so you guys, thank you for getting up so early. <laughs> I mean, I go to bed early, so this is my normal she was, time. She went to bed. I have to go and hang out and entertain all my crew. Who did you see last night? Uh, went and saw John Osborne. Woo! Nice, nice. And I do uh, some roulette. <laughs> <laughs> and? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't that. I just played for just a minute. Uh, as long as it takes, right? <laughs> um, I don't have been to the casino yet. Is it exciting? Uh, yeah, it's cool. it's cool. I was pretty tired. I just went to bed. Yeah. So, how long have we known you now? When, I'm trying to think of when we first met you. Well, I know the first time that I met <laughs> Melissa, but I don't. Think that let's tell that, let's tell that story. <laughs> the very first time? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, um, sorry. <laughs> um, so I, by chance, met um, Lily and Mark Brown, who used to play with. You remember, you guys remember Mark Brown? Yeah. yeah. The bass player? Yeah. yeah. And, and um, uh, I was playing in LA, and um, even Fritz would play drums. Mm -hmm. And so I was uh, I was playing in LA and um, for somehow we we got in touch. I think Melissa well, there's one of the people from the fan club emailed me and saw that I was coming and said asked me to be a guest to Lily was singing. And so I went out and um uh, at the Mint. Yeah. And um, I went and attended. So we became friends. And then I think this is when I was living in Atlanta and um, Melissa came through at uh, the Chastain. And uh, Mark and uh, and Fritz and all uh, and uh, Philip Sacy as well yeah. brought me backstage, you know. So uh, I mean, of course, obviously I'd waited a long time for that and um, introduced myself and said, "Hi, I'm Melissa." Yeah. She's like, oh, I'm Melissa. <laughs> You guys, um, the last crew was that the first time the last crew was there? and we've been oh, we've been buddies. Then you took us out on the su uh, one of the most fun nights we've ever had <laughs> yeah. in Nashville. There's two bars called Winners and Losers. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us right about that. That was such a fun night. 
you know yeah. that bar, Wendy? I, I've never been. Oh, you have to. It's a songwriter's <laughs> bar, right? In town. What they get? Yeah, the music. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know about winners and losers. I know. Yeah. I, live I live in Spring Hill, but it's not, you know, I get okay, to Spring Hill. You. Well, you know what? When we get back. We like, got Uber now. I can, I can go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it's <laughs> okay. You have to come out on the 11th. I'm playing the okay, Whiskey Jam, which April. is what we took. I'm we were we were in I'm Nashville because Melissa was doing this thing with Cam mm-hmm. and um, um, Lindsay L. Lindsay L. L. And people. said, let's go out. Melissa, I, I'm always like, let's go out. She's like, no, I'm tired. Like, no, we're the most <laughs> humble of rock stars, right? Like, we'll walk into a room and sh- people will look and she go, oh, who's here? <laughs> This bar's amazing. There's like this little hole in the wall that they keep throwing equipment in there, and then bands put up their, they set up, and then they just throw it out the window. Kind of, it feels like that that back window, and then a new band sets up. So you guys got up, and you guys, it, it was a little jam, right? My buddy Ward uh, runs the place, and it's it's completely blown up. Hit the whiskey jam. It's just a big, huge um, brand now. But yeah, I called him ahead. I was like, uh, look, can you? Make sure that back table back there is cleared out for us, and we got it insane. That was a fun. That was night. badass. Oh, that was really, really, night, yeah. really amazing. Yeah. She, as they all started singing "Come to My Window." And she yeah. Went, oh, they did know it, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, they know it. it was crazy. Yeah. Country folk know how to get. You know, so. <laughs> all right, now so your beautiful friend Daphne, who just not that long ago you said, "Listen, you have to watch this video." Uh, of that my friend did it kind of kind of blew me away so tell tell me the story about how you guys met and we had a similar guitar player and uh, my guitar player was like oh you need to meet um this girl daphne will and she's gonna get along and she was telling me oh you gotta meet this chick sonya and she probably told us each yeah a million times you know before we actually yeah. met and we'd be like oh and then she came over to my house remember Yes. You rode through it. She rode deep with like a whole crew and came through to my house. <laughs> and then we, we totally became best friends since then. And we've been riding. And had you done a song at that point or no? Um, No, I hadn't. Okay. We met, uh, what, five or six years yeah. ago. Okay. So, yeah. It's such a just, it's just meeting you and just to see your work. It was really, she, this, this song is about addiction and her brother. And I think for many of us who have people in our lives who are, are suffering from that. It, it's it, it it Melissa and I watched it and it was like an arrow that just pierced us. It's so it's so beautiful. Congratulations, because that's you. a really hard narrative to get across in a way to help yeah. give people comfort. And um, I'm hoping you're going to do it for us today. Can I am. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, l- yeah. Let's do it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'll let you set it up. And do you want to stay seated or you want to stand I'll up? I'll probably just sit. We're all sitting here. Yeah. So. Great. Wendy, isn't this awesome? I love it so much. Thank you for letting me. And then Kathy, you're coming out later. This is so fun. You good? Isn't Linda like one of the coolest people we've ever met? She's so cool. She's funny too. Um, But this 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 particular song, um, uh, Daphne's been in recovery uh, for how long have you been uh, sober, Daphne? Three years. Three years. Inspiration in my life, like uh, she's inspired me to, to get sober, and kind of um, just try that kind of road of clarity, just here. because I want to. And um, but this song here, um, I, mean, I wanted to say that only because I, I'm, I admire her so much because we have partied our ass off together. <laughs> but I've seen her life transform, and I've seen her transform, and from a from one place to another and I'm just so proud of her. She is she's got a song on right now on um, a particular cruise line that um uh, they that <laughs> it's on the television. She's done uh film and television for Xfinity, Grey's Anatomy, what else? Um So I write at Sony A T V full time so I do a lot of film and T V writing as well. So in addition to my artist platform, which is basically dedicated to mental health and recovery. Which, come on, that. Uh, I just, I'm going to continue this conversation this whole week.
wait, because Serena Ryder's here too, yeah. and she is the, oh, she's amazing, and she is, has very strong views on this, and is kind of the face of this in Canada right now, so I just love that this is a, a, a conversation, obviously doing Nurse Jackie, but I, 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 I love being able to, as, as women, really be able to talk about this, and we can all give each other experience, strength, and hope, so. When Sonia asked me to come on the cruise, I was, I mean, I've just always been, I just need to say it, blown away by both of you and how much you give of yourselves to causes that are just so deep and important to society. So it's really just an honor to be up here with you. Aww, thank you. Thank you. How many hits does this have? Uh, like 25 million people have seriously seen this on Facebook. It's, it's, it's just, and if you can, I don't know how our wireless is, but if you get a chance to watch the video, it's so powerful. It's, it's Daphne one Check shot one right into right. a camera, and it's so powerful, and anyway. <clears throat> it was um, super terrifying because I've never released uh, anything so personal before, and the video that we shot was literally shot, like I had no idea that we were gonna shoot it. It was just a buddy of mine, and we had just recorded finish kind of recording it yeah. and he was like you know I really want to catch you know in this moment um, just kind of the vibe or whatever it's a it's a beautiful so just shot it, you know just a one take thing and I you know put it online not because it's, it's really powerful and as a filmmaker myself it's rare that you get a performance and obviously you trusted him because whoever's got the camera you kind of tell how someone feels about him, and for you to be able to obviously reach that Oh, yeah, he, well, he's a buddy, yeah. you know, so I trust him, so. Well, <laughs> amazing. It's kind of so. game, man. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called Somebody, Someone. Bright light on the corner of a dark street Just a cardboard sign and a can in between Some dirty bare feet Eyes that I can't Yeah, well, I could spare 20 if I knew you'd be using it to get just what you need And a woo, 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 I'm just another cold shoulder Somebody, someone 
for everybody that especially the older we get sometimes that's that's a tricky substance for us and so uh, um, and as long as we keep talking about it we, I think we can help each other through and again thank you for that art because that's beyond important okay I love my, my panel and it's just gonna get better because oh, now we're gonna bring out oh one of my favorite people in the whole world ladies and gentlemen Ready, Kathy? I'm ready. This is Chef Kathy Jenkins. <laughs> Come join the panel. And did, did you just, no, so you've met everybody, but did you, I, I don't know where to start with you, because this is, um, uh, how do we start? I, you're just one of my favorite people. First, I want to let everyone know my name is Kathy Jenkins. My husband's somewhere out there. He's right there. He's the guy. Right there. Family right there. We've been married 29 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, we're kind of stuck together like glue now. <laughs> so you don't see one without the other. And, and it's great. And um, Linda, this panel you have up here is amazing. I didn't know any of you until I got here this morning. And to hear everyone's story and to see how... Linda and Melissa has built this, you know, and connected this. It is, it is really amazing. And your song that you just sang, everybody, everyone's someone, you know, and it, it, we are, it, that meant a lot to me when we said that because we forget that. You know, it almost made me cry <laughs> listening to that song. And I, I, I'm a rough, tough cream puff, you know? <laughs> And I tell you, it takes a lot for me to really tear up. And uh, that was an awesome song. It, it, it was awesome. And a uh, great story how I met Linda and Melissa. They were looking for us. We are originally from Ferguson. So we're kind of, uh, I consider us ground zero. Kind of always say, wow, that Ferguson kind of set the world on fire. And it made us uh, look at issues that we are dealing with that we kind of have been sweeping under the rug. And so now it's blatant and it's open. And it kind of started right there in that little town. And my restaurant that I own is two doors away from the Ferguson Police Department. And uh, so you all saw the stories on the news, what was happening, what was going on there. And um, when the riots and everything happened, we were the only restaurant on the street that went ahead and opened right after. But it wasn't that we opened right after. It was a reason that we were able to open after. Now, a lot of the protesters, we knew them personally because I would take my food cart over there and feed them. They would come to the restaurant. So I was able to build a rapport with them, my husband and I, and we got to know them. And so when the verdict was released and everyone was angry, uh, the chaos broke out and uh, we left. We closed early that day because the police department told us we all should. And I had gotten a phone call, Kathy, they are after your restaurant, so I want to throw a patio table through your front, front door. And uh, of course, I was devastated, but there was nothing I could do. But immediately following that, I received a video of all those protesters that I had been feeding and bringing food to. They created a human chain, and they protected my restaurant. Aww. So the broken was that window and they were literally on the ground wrestling him down the guy that was you know trying to destroy the restaurant you can hear, hear them screaming no not Kathy you know not Kathy you know? and uh, I didn't think much I was happy don't you let me not say it that way that I didn't think much about it I was happy but I didn't realize that that was going to be world news and that video uh, got into the hands of Anderson Cooper and it was the first video to show that the protesters weren't vandals. They were making anyone that was standing up for their right to be a criminal, to be a, a vandal, to be violent, 
and that wasn't the case. It was opportunists there, and they knew that in those type of situations you could loot, you know, you can break in. The police really don't do much when that happens, and, they, and it was opportunity. And uh, it was the first time that they were separated from most people. So I was kind of proud to be a part of that. And um, so a lot of people came to eat, you know, and uh, we had NFL players out uh, helping. We just had a lot of things going on. But Linda, was her job is finding unique places to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've ever eaten with Linda, Linda loves food. <laughs> she is a real foodie. And uh, she found uh, Kathy's Kitchen online, so she called the restaurant. And uh, no one <laughs> would pick up the phone. They'd be like, oh, uh, who's calling Melissa Etheridge? <laughs> <laughs> hey, somebody named Melissa Etheridge called. <laughs> so uh, I, I totally missed all that. I didn't get any of the messages. And I came in on a Sunday, and uh, it was a signed album and a CD uh, on the counter. And I'm closed on Sundays. So I saw this stuff. I called, looked on the schedule, I called my waitress at work, I said, hey Jasmine, did this lady that left this stuff, was it her, did she leave this stuff? Yeah, she was real nice, they left me a real big tip. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you, you didn't think to call me, do you know who this is? <laughs> and so I, I put a post up on my Facebook page, and I said, gosh, I, if anybody's out there that knows Melissa Ethers, tell her I'm so sorry that I missed her and uh, I would love to get reconnected. Linda responded. Aww. I mean, I almost couldn't believe little old me had someone respond <laughs> on my Facebook page. And they came back in town maybe a year later, when you say about a, a year later, and I was there. So I didn't have to depend on anybody. And, and then we got to meet Jerome, too, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. and, and you guys. They, they were just amazing. Yeah, we just hit it off. And the food is amazing. And the <laughs> restaurant. It, it, was, it, was, it was just, we were so, we, the moment we met you both, we were like, okay, these are our new friends. <laughs> and um, we dragged them to, we took dragged them to an NFL game yeah, last awesome. year. That was so much fun. Um, and, and again, it's, it's Kathy, Kathy's such an inspiration, not just in her neighborhood. She, she is, the, the, I'm all about powerful women right now, and we need beautiful women to be the this, this sense right now. And so when I met Kathy and Jerome, they were such a team that, that felt, they reminded me of me and Melissa, you know, <laughs> we're just, we, we, if we're not here to, to, to better the world, I'm not quite sure why we're here. And so, and I happen to believe that a lot of that comes through food and your restaurant, tell, tell them how the restaurant, why, why the theme is what it is. Well. We're greedy, first of all. <laughs> and uh, we uh, have a chemical business as well that we've had almost 30 years. And we worked from home and we traveled a lot. And uh, when I would travel, I would take cooking classes along the way so I could come up with recipes that was indigenous to the area so I could recreate the dish that I had when I was in that city. That's and, a great idea. <laughs> when you love something, take it with you. Yes. And uh, so we came back from vacation and we were like, Gosh, you know, we can't get none of that stuff we got on the road, you know. And he said, you know what, you should open up a restaurant. I'm like, you think I could? He said, yeah, I'm telling you, I'm going to make you famous, Kathy. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put your names in like, Kathy, I'm going to do it for you. He loves his wife <laughs> so much. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And so we uh, opened up the made a restaurant and it's based on our travels, kind of like Route 66. So the interesting thing about our menu, you don't just order appetizers, entrees, you can order from New Mexico, you can order from Chicago, uh, you can order from California. Uh, Utah didn't make the menu. <laughs> Gumbo, you can. Uh, so it has more of a southern flair, you know, because it's nice and warm down there. We really don't go up north a whole lot. But uh, we started St. Louis, made our way to Florida, then we went through the entire bottom of the United States, came up through California, made our way through Colorado, all the way back home. And so all those states are in the restaurant. And uh, when I first decided to open my uh, food guy, he says, Kathy, you cannot do this menu like that. It's too hard, it's too difficult. People don't like new things. And I did try to listen to him, and I tried to fit my life into the standard of what everybody else does, and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> it didn't work like the menu way too heavy in other areas. I said, I just can't do it, you know, I've, I've got to do it this way. 
and people love the idea. I always say when you're 30 and over, you go out to eat, you want to be entertained. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And when you don't want to be entertained, you order to go. <laughs> so I love food, and I love to make food an experience. And so when you come in the restaurant, it's a diner, so it's the oldies playing, you know, Motown, you know, and so you can watch us cook, and everything is fresh. Uh, because the diner is so small and we do so much volume, we have to get orders in three times a week, so we cook everything when you order it. So it, it's, uh, it turned out to make everything to be so healthy, and I don't even know if that was my goal. I just like good food, you know? <laughs> That's to just love good food. And so people love it. So it kind of caught on the theme. Uh, and people were trying to make their way through the menu so they could kind of ride the road, you know, uh, 66. So it was just cool. I, I just loved everything about oh, it. Oh, and in the restaurant are pictures of you and your kids and Jerome. Oh, yeah. and, and in the bathroom, their vacation photos. It's just the greatest <laughs> restaurant you'll ever go to. Yeah, so it's fun. What floor are you making dishes on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> Tell me, Linda. I, 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 we got to find that out. Could you? That, is that today? That's no. Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. Um, we're gonna figure that out. But you got to You got to go to this demonstration. I'm making Melissa's favorite, which yeah. she gets every time she comes. We're, we're gonna. We're gonna yeah. go. We're gonna be there at that demonstration. That's gonna be really fun. Um, now, what did, is it? Wh when is it? No. What's Melissa's favorite? favorite. Oh, fish tacos. <laughs> They're freaking amazing. <laughs> now, Kathy, did you now? When, when's the first time you fell in love with cooking? Was there someone in your life? Oh that my God! Well, first of all, I was a at-home mom, you know, and I tip my hat off to women that can do it because I loved it. I I I, I enjoy food. Now, when I first started cooking, I could not cook. People really don't believe that. I was terrible. I was the last of four kids, the only girl, and I was babied my entire life. When I went off to college, I didn't even know how to wash my own clothes. So when I got married, it was like getting thrown into 12 feet and I didn't know how to swim. <laughs> you know, so I literally had to learn everything, how to cook. And somewhere along the way, I just got tired of just cooking with seasoned salt, garlic powder, you know what I mean? And I was like, gosh, I've, I've got to spruce things up around here. I'm getting sick of this, you know, when I thought I did something fancy is when I used paprika. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I said, you know, I want to take some classes. My first class I ever took was in uh, Disney. Uh, yeah. Disney Institute, you know, they offer the classes there. And, and gosh, my eyes were like wide open. My palate was wide open. And what I didn't realize, I had a talent of tasting things and could re recreate it. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, hmm, get the cilantro on this. I know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, here you go again. <laughs> but he learned to love it, you know, because he loves to eat. And that's kind of how it happened for me. And as a mom, I mean, in the older we get too, you realize just how important fresh food is. And, oh, do. and there, there's a real food inequality in the world. And, and also, I think psychologically for women, sometimes we just, we take care of the whole world and we just don't think about what we should eat and we just grab. And, you know, unfortunately our world is filled with processed food. So another thing that I've watched Melissa since cancer, I mean, she changed my life too after, uh, you know, as she was going through chemo, I saw that the only thing that that helped cool the fire was, was lemon water or sweet potato or we never knew the word alkaline, you know, and I didn't realize. Uh, and so from all these years of how important food is and, and you know, Melissa doesn't eat after show. I do. I'm starving after show. I don't work, but I'm stuck. <laughs> she never does after show food. And that's, I think, most musicians' downfall is like after show you're eating late because it's it's just simple. You lay down, it's hard to digest while you're laying down. You get very acidic. So I'm learning, but she is, is so good. That's, so that's why it's so important when we're on the road and we find a place that with love is making food because that's, it's sort of, it's, it's, it's so important. So, um, and I just, a little birdie told me that you were playing at the Stardust, <laughs> three o'clock. <laughs> On Thursday. Oh, Don't you right. love everyone yeah. here? Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, I just, I, I love today so much. Our panel, I, this went by so fast. And um, again, you guys, I, I was imagining all of you sitting up here, and here you are. And it feels, <laughs> I'm just in a big, yum, yummy, warm blanket. Um, I, I just want to thank you guys. And please, everybody, uh, come see everyone here. Daphne, are you playing on the boat? I'm going to play during Sonia's 
Yes. Okay. Yeah, I drug her out here. I'm getting her up on stage. I well, got her up on stage last night. <laughs> Perfect. Because, come on, this is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do the Mad Hatter party on Wednesday. Yes. Okay. okay. And um, Sonia, would you do you want to sing a little something for us? To, yeah. Just say goodbye, or you sure is that time? I yeah. No, I think we're we're almost yeah. right there. And so, yeah. would you like to sing this out? Yeah. Come on, ladies. Yeah. Would you like to sing it? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You want me to hand you this? Wait, I can do it. I can stand. I can give it to you. Oh, you might. I might hit you. Yeah. Okay. Let's get to <laughs> uh, you know, I'm gonna do something that I barely do. Me and Daphne have been writing a lot together. Um, you were talking about empowerment. Um, uh, we've, we've been writing a lot of these uplifting uh, songs and um, just to try to inspire uh, positivity. And uh, that's what a lot of Daphne's music is about, which I kind of needed that around me because I can, I'm a, I'm a brooder. I can write, I can write some really dark things. So she kind of shined a little light into my. We're just in England on a, on writers retreat and did some shows and we wrote this. We've never played this before. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we wrote this song to a track, which is like top lining is basically when there's already an existing track. It's kind of like in the EDM world, uh, more electronic kind of dance music vibes, and you kind of sit the melody and the lyrics on top of an existing track. It's just a different process as opposed to sitting there with the guitar and strumming chords or starting what, the melody. What's it called again? It's top called... lining. Wow. Cool. Top lining. So, um, and sometimes they'll send you, like, I'll get sent tracks and they'll say, can you top line over these? And you draw a little, you kind of sing little sketches over the song. That's awesome. Um, and stuff like that. Just make your own melody. But, anyways, that's how we wrote this. So, to take it from, just to put it into context, because that was the context we wrote it in. Now she's going to do it on an acoustic guitar. I have no idea what she's about to do, so we'll just see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> song because uh you know we were talking about getting older and the song's called feels like ages oh yeah I'm 
voice. Feels like ages, feels like ages. Feels like, feels like ages, feels like ages. And then it goes low. Feels like ages. Okay, so Sonia tonight, are you on tonight? Does everybody know? I think, no, no, good to get a night off. I think most Chris Bowe's party is tonight, isn't it? Oh, great, okay. We love her. Yeah, we'll probably be there. Okay, yeah. so we'll see you guys there. Yeah. Wendy, are you off today? Do you get to relax? I'm no. off today, I'm doing a uh, dinner thing. Oh, yeah. Dinner thing. Oh, yeah. Right. The what thing? It's a nice table. Thing. Oh, come to, come to my table, table. the fundraiser for Lindsay's table. Legacy. Thank you. Tomorrow, I mean, no, the next day, I uh, perform at Magnum P.I. Yeah. Magnum P.I. Yeah. Right. 8 p.m. And then on the 4th at 12. And Kathy, you're going to be at 3 o'clock at the Stardust. And before we go, I, want, I, I just want everyone to know there's a great Nancy Pelosi story I want to oh. end with. So you got to tell this. Okay, because come on. Okay, real quick, you got to tell us that story. Right. Really funny story. Uh, I'm never in a restaurant after 4 o'clock p.m., but I always think, well, gosh, sure has a way of doing things. And I was at the restaurant after 4 o'clock. I'm in the back, just filling around stuff I really didn't have to do, but I don't even know why I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. And uh, one of my waitresses come back, Miss Kathy, you, you, you need to come out here. You need to come out here. This guy, he's, he's here to see you. I'll walk out. Guy, he has the thing in his ear. He's secret service, you know. And I'm like, oh, God, what did I do? <laughs> He's like, uh, Kathy, can you follow me? <laughs> Everyone in the restaurant, everybody's looking at me and I'm looking back at them like, help. <laughs> and so uh, I'm passing a couple booths. I said, like, can we sit right here and talk? He like, no, keep going. So I'm like, oh God. Where is he taking you outside? Like, I'm like, are we going? That's what I said. Are we going, are we going outside? Where, where are we going? So we made it close to the door, not outside, kind of in between where we have the walls of Melissa where right. she <laughs> came to the restaurant. And um, he says, Kathy, Someone very important is coming to your restaurant on Monday. I could not call you. We could not email you. I must say this in person to you. I said, okay. I was like, who is one of the most powerful women in the world? I was like, well, who is it? <laughs> Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> wants to come to your restaurant on Monday. How, what do you think about that? <laughs> Let me ask my husband. <laughs> So, you said, yeah. So, yeah, so he, well, he wasn't there. He was at practice, you know. And so he says, you, can, you gotta ask your husband. Yeah, I gotta ask my husband. <laughs> so he gave me his card. So of course I went home, told Jerome. We were excited. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, the team came in the restaurant the next day uh, to, you know, look at the place, you know, security reasons. They came in, they ate, you know, they walked around. Pretty cool, they ordered food, but they were so nice, you know. I. I the first guy was so stern, I didn't expect everyone to have a personality. I thought they were going to be just like the last guy. And so they were all nice and kind. And then what I didn't know, they came back again on a Saturday. Loved the food so much, they went on Twitter. And they tweeted like crazy. So they like, oh, Kathy, we came back again. Pure excitement, we came back again on Saturday. And we came in plain clothes, nobody knew who we were. <laughs> Oh my God, we ate so much food. Oh, we just love your place, you know? So I'm like, awesome. And so uh, we couldn't tell anybody. They said, you guys cannot tell anyone who's coming. Uh, you can't tweet it. You can't do anything. Nothing. Nobody can know. You can tell someone when she comes into the restaurant, when she walks through the door, at that moment, you can say something. And Kathy, please do not talk to her outside. Let her make it in the building because she doesn't know that people want to kill her. <laughs> 
said, and she will sit outside and she will talk to everyone. <laughs> so I said, okay, gotcha. So um, they made it to the restaurant and I'm gonna tell you, time, you've never seen time. Well, you guys are artists, you do understand time. But I've never seen time in this fashion. Two minutes, one minute away. Uh, yeah. Come over here, stand right here. She's gonna come through the door. Five, four. <laughs> Actually, we were about to perform. <laughs> <laughs> and so she came through the door and she came and gave me the biggest hug. Oh, we hugged. I was like, oh God, I'm hugging the speaker of the house. Okay. I, mean, I, I really can't believe this. So the senator, the Congress, everybody who was somebody came with her this day and came in, sat down at the table, or gumbo, jambalaya. I mean, they ordered so much food, it was kind of like a, you know, a big spread. Now I'm thinking, okay, I've been introduced and that's kind of it, you know, and they're gonna do what they do. I had no idea they were really coming to see me. <laughs> I had no idea. And uh, her, uh, uh, what was her name? Her head uh, lady. What was her name, Jerome? Okay, I can't remember. <laughs> well, anyway, she says, Kathy, uh, come stand in front of the table. Nancy says, I want everybody to be quiet. I want you guys to hear Kathy's story. <laughs> so here are all these powerful people looking at me, <laughs> straight in the face, and I'm standing in front of this table. I'm like, oh my God. I look at my husband, he was like, just be you, Kathy. <laughs> And so I told them the whole story kind of way I just told you guys. And she, then after they ate, she literally grabbed me by my hand, Nancy. I'm thinking it's over, I'm done. We go in the corner of the booth, just her and I, with the New York Times. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and you know, it was so funny. So we're sitting there and they're interviewing her. No, I didn't say much other than, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Her whole story, the questions they were asking her, she was like, and that is why we're in Kathy's kitchen. That is, I mean, she just constantly, she never forgot to include me, and it was a conscious thought on her mind to make sure she did that. I, 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 I listen, I could have passed out. I honestly could not believe that that was happening. And to hear her answer the questions they were asking her, they were trying to trip her up and things, and you knew why she was who she was at that moment, at least I did. Witty, smart woman quick on her feet. They could not tie her up in questions. I was like, she's freaking incredible. <laughs> and that's so funny, because I'm just who I am. When she did it, when we're sitting on the same side, when she answered the questions like, I was like, God, how she do it? I was doing it like this on the table. <laughs> you have to tell her, you have to tell her uh, she actually who Oh yeah, meet. so wait, so uh, she's like, Kathy, Tell me, stop that. What do you want? Tell me. What do you do? what do you want to do? Tell me. I can make it happen. Oh, wow. Wow. I said, I, I want to meet Michelle Obama. <laughs> she, said, uh, she said, that's all you want to She said, oh, Michelle will love you, Kathy. <laughs> and then she says, is that all you want? I said, no, I want to cook with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I want to meet Ellen. <laughs> I wanted you guys to hear that story because this is how the world can change. And sweet love, this is your your gen your your future is going to be powerful women, and that's so exciting. And so all of these women, I, I just want this whole week to be a theme of that. That that no matter what, you know, don't hold in at any any dreams you have or the thought of meeting anybody. We're just all one phone call away from each other. So thank you for this. This was a blast. We'll see you